Great, thanks, Paolo. Um, so yeah, as um, as Paolo mentioned, I'm going to talk to you about my research looking at influence in dynamic financial networks. Um, and yeah, I currently work at the Financial Conduct Authority, and my main focus there is a combination of both network analytics and anomaly detection. Um, but um, but yeah, talking about my research in, in this talk. So um, the idea of, of my research boils down to relating changes at an individual level to the overall behavior of a system and from a from a regulatory perspective the hope is that this can inform prioritization of regulatory resource uh, to focus on particular parts of the financial network to to find the bits which have the most influence on the overall structure of the network um, and in this talk i'm going to talk to you about my first paper which we put up on archive just before christmas um, in which we propose a measure, to, uh, a method to measure the structural importance of a relationship or an edge in the network, and then use this in a mathematical model for how the network evolves. Um, and I will also show ways to relate edge importance to how predictable a change to an edge is. Um, so the central concept of my research is to to look at the use of eigenvalue derivatives as a measure for edge importance as this tells us about the response of the network to an individual edge change. Um, and in order to, to have a, a way to compute the, the um, eigenvalue derivative, um, I've used an approach um, applying perturbations to the network to derive um, an approximation for the eigenvalue derivative um, with risk, so the leading eigenvalue derivative with respect to each edge, which I denote throughout this as uh, LE. Um, and what we see here, that this actually turns out to be quite simple. So it turns out to be the, the product of the eigen, eigenvector centralities of, of the individual nodes within the network. And this metric, it gives us an idea of how edges rank in terms of importance, but we want to understand when importance of edges relates to subsequent changes. So, to help understand this, uh, we propose a model that allows us to, to capture this um, dependency. And we want this model to be able to capture two things. First, the how much our, our measure, so how much LE uh, is indicative of whether or not an edge will change. And secondly, how much LE indicates the size of, of a resultant change. Um, and so for the first of these, we can, we can capture this using a Bernoulli distribution, which gives a one of probability P, um, and zero otherwise, where, where our, our parameter P is given by alpha times L e to the rho. So um, alpha here is a scaling parameter, which, which ensures that P is a probability and rho, and rho controls the extent to which um, our measure L e is indicative of the future change. So a higher rho means that L e will, um, an edge with a high value of L e will be much more likely to change than an edge with low L e. Um, and then for the second part, so, so looking at how much LE tells us about this, the size of the resultant changes. Um, for this research, we simply looked at a, a Gaussian distribution with a mean of zero and the standard deviation given by beta LE to the gamma. So again, we've got a scaling parameter, but then we've got the parameter gamma, which controls the extent to which LE controls the, the width of the distrib distribution which we're drawing the edge changes from. And now, and once we've got our model, we can use our data to estimate the values of the parameters for this model. Um, and so to do this, uh, we use a maximum likelihood approach where we maximize the, the log likelihoods in equation four for the case of the Bernoulli distribution and equation five. <clears throat> um, so, so calculating the, the gradient of these with respect to the parameters and finding where this gradient is zero. Um, and some of you will probably recognize that this is quite similar to uh, the maximum likelihood for a coin toss. However, here we don't have a fixed parameter theta. Theta varies with, with LE. So um, in order to, to, to solve this, we, we can't solve it analytically. So numerical optimization was used to, to find the parameters for, for different data. Um, and an interesting thing about the parameters of the model is that they tell us about whether or not we would expect subsequent changes to be predictable from the value of LE. So for instance, if we have a high value of the parameter 
if we have a high value of the parameter rho, we would expect that LE would would give us a, a, a more of an idea of, of whether or not an edge will change. So what, what we've looked at to, to assess this is um, training a logistic regression classifier, so just a simple classifier, to predict whether or not an edge will change given the value of LE. And then comparing the performance of this to the parameter values um, is something that we look at as well. And yeah, so that's that's basically all of the methods that we've used in this research. Um, I'm now going to talk you through through the results. Um, so first of all, looking at the results um, from a, looking at data that we, we generate, so synthetic data or kind of toy networks models. Um, so this first slide here is looking at essentially a sanity check on the, how how well an approximation um, our, our, our perturbation approximation that we made is for the derivative. Um, so by comparing the value of LE given by the blue line to the change of lambda for a range of single edge perturbations. Um, and we, we can see that the, the, the approximation does hold for values of, uh, so perturbation values of around about 0.05, but as you get larger, they do, it does seem to deviate slightly. Um, we're also here. We can look at within this figure. Um, we can we can use this to assess how well Ellie is actually capturing the structural roles within the network. Um, so um, I've numbered them here. You might not be able to actually see the the numbers on this, so I apologise. But um, basically, what we see is that the edges, which which are within the the cliques of this barbar network. Um, these have a, a higher value of LE than the ones in the in the center of the bar. And the edges which connect from the bar into the clique um, are the ones which have the, the, the very highest values of LE, so the ones which have the highest structural role in the network. So, so it does appear that LE is capturing the structural roles within this simple toy network. And the next thing we want to do is to check whether the parameters of the model are controlling the, the temporal evolution of the networks as we expect. So um, here, what I'm looking at um, is the probability for edges to remain unchanged given the value of LE. So um, we're, we're, we're first of all looking at, we'll, we'll look first of all at the first two parameters which control whether or not an edge will change. So this first figure here is looking at the parameter alpha, which if, if you remember was controlling, just as, it's just a, a scaling parameter. So it ensures that this remains as a probability. And so what we would expect is it kind of um, has a has a just a, a decreasing effect on the probability. And we do see that alpha does have this this effect. It's 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 causing the overall um, the, the probability as, as alpha increases, the probability for edges to remain unchanged decreases. Um, we do see a slight bias introduced here as well, um, where values of edges with, with high LE become more likely relative um, to, to edges with low LE to change. Um, but when we look at the parameter rho, we see that this bias is, is much heavier controlled by the um, parameter rho. So if we look at the value of rho of, of zero, we see that the, the value of, um, so the probability for edges to remain unchanged is, is pretty much constant across the entire range of different values of LE observed for the edges in the network. Um, whereas when we move to, to the very highest value of LE, we see that edges with, with, a, with a very low value of LE are much more likely to remain unchanged than those with a, with a high value of LE. Um, so, so this parameter is effectively allowing us to control the extent to which LE is indicative of the future changes. And now we want to look at the parameters which control the size of the resultant change. So here I'm looking at the joint distribution of uh, the size of relative changes with the, um, the values of LE. Um, and first of all, focusing on the beta parameter. Um, so um, what we see here is that 
um, no, sorry, this is looking at the gamma parameter. So, so for the gamma parameter, we see quite clearly that it is controlling the bias of the distribution. So when gamma is, is negative, we see that edges of low values of LE are more likely to show larger relative changes. Whereas if we move through, so this is, this is a value of negative one for the parameter gamma, but as you move through to a parameter value of positive one um, in the purple plot, we see that edges with a high value of, of LE um, are more likely to experience larger relative changes. Um, and then for the for the final parameter, so this, this one is the beta parameter, um, we simply see that the beta parameter controls the width of the, the distribution. So now we've we've explored that our our model is is performing as we expected. Um, we now want to apply it to some some real data sets, to um, and this allows us to assess whether or not these data sets show a dependency on structural importance in their temporal evolution. So for the, for this um, research, we've had access to first of all three UK equity data sets in their raw transaction forms. And to make these comparable to the other two data sets that we use, we, we aggregated these weekly. Um, and then to compare to some open source data sets so that people can try to reproduce what we do. Um, we've we've also looked at uh, a network of bilateral trade between countries uh, dating from uh, late 1800s to near present and a data set of uh, messages sent between college students as well. Um, and first things first, we can make some some simple observations from from the data. So here, what we're looking at are uh, the distributions um, of the values of LE for um, separated by whether or not edges then subsequently change. So um, the blue boxes show the edges which. Uh, show the distribution of the values of LE for edges which don't subsequently change, and the orange ones show the distributions for edges which do subsequently change. And we immediately see that there's a difference with the um, across the different data sets for this. So for the college messaging data set and for the first two equities data set that we have, we apply um, these two, we do see that there is a, a noticeable difference in the means of these distributions between edges which don't change and edges which do. Um, however, for the for the bilateral trade data set and the third equity data set, we see that this is um, this is we see a much smaller difference, if if even a very un, kind of unnoticeable difference um, between these. Um, so, and and here again, this is another observation of just from the data distributions itself. So here we're looking at the, again, it's the, the probability for edges to remain unchanged given the values of LE. And we actually saw these earlier for the synthetic data sets. And here we, we see that the, the changes are quite <laughs> well behaved and linear. Um, whereas when we're looking at real data sets, we, we see that this is not the case. Um, but what we, we do see is some, some quite interesting behaviors within this. So, um, Focusing particularly on the, the bilateral trade data set and the, the third equity data set. So uh, we, we see quite an interesting regime switch where at first for values of LE increasing um, as we as we increase the value from, from zero, we see that the probability to remain unchanged for edges is, is decreasing. So as edges are becoming more structurally important within the network, um, the probability for them to to remain unchanged or the probability so the probability for them to change increases. So edges which are more structurally important are are expected to change more. But as we get to the edges which have the very highest values of LE, so the the edges which have the uh, are the most structurally important within these networks, we actually see that the probability um, to remain unchanged uh, increases. So, so these edges are much, much less likely to change. And, and this has quite interesting implications for the stability of, of these networks. Perhaps these very structurally important edges are, are playing a, a key role in the network and their stability is, is important. And as I mentioned earlier, um, one of the key things that we looked at was, was training a, a logistic regression classifier to predict whether or not edges will change given the value of LE. 
And um, so, so in this figure here, I'm presenting the, um, the ROC curves for this. Um, so first things first, it's, it's worth noting that, that we're not trying to, within this research, we're not trying to suggest that, that we can predict whether or not edges change, but we want to relate the predictability to, to our model. Um, so firstly, we do see that the college messaging data set um, has a relatively reasonable performance. I mean, it's not perfect by any means, but um, it shows um, a much better performance for the classifier than, than say, the, the bilateral trade data set. Um, and um, so, so, so now, yeah, so um, the, the next thing to do is to compare the performance of, of these classifiers to, to the parameters of, of our model. So, so this is what I'm presenting in this table here. Um, so first things first, we do see that the, the college messaging data set is showing a, a value for the parameter rho, which is an order of magnitude higher than the parameter values for the other data sets. Um, and so, so yeah, the fact that this is also showing the best classification performance could perhaps suggest that there is this relationship between the parameter values and and the performance of the the classification. Um, however, the relationship isn't isn't clear cut. Um, so um, essentially, um, th there's a few reasons for this. So first of all, um, the parameter alpha will also have an effect on the, the predictability to to some extent. We saw we again saw the introduction of some bias from the parameter alpha um, in the plots we looked at earlier. Um, uh, so we we can't disentangle the effect of the two parameters. Um, and also, the parameters would assume that that we're capturing an approximately linear relationship, which which we're, we're definitely not seeing here. So um, so perhaps there's an oversimplification simplification in the model um, there. Um, so the the final thing that we want to oh so hang on before I move on to that the other thing that we should know is that um, that the 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 parameter values for rho are positive in all cases, which is is meaning that higher LA nodes are more likely to change, um, which is is quite interesting from a stability perspective. Um, we might initially assume that edges which are really important uh, might be expected to change less. Um, but um, but yeah, I think focusing more on the on the distributions that we observe here here could be quite useful in, in trying to understand how how structural importance links to stability. And Finally, moving on to the 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 um, the other other parameters within the network. Um, so now we're looking at whether or not the value of LE is observed to have an effect on the the scale of the resultant change. So again, looking to see if there is a a bias in the joint distribution of um, of relative edge changes to to the and the value of LE um, and I'm not presenting the parameter values here, but um, if you refer to my paper, um, the parameter values for gamma are what we want to compare for this. So we do see that the um, the, the plot here, which is showing the largest bias for, for large values of LE, showing larger relative changes is the, is the bilateral trade data set. And, and this data set did correspondingly show the largest value of, um, of the parameter gamma and again followed by equity three and then down to the college messaging data set, which shows the lowest value of, of gamma. Um, so, so this is suggesting that the larger early edges show, show larger relative edge changes, um, which again is quite interesting for, for stability if, if these very large, the influential edges are changing by a large amount as well. Um, it might act to either destabilize the system, but or also or potentially bring a system back into a, a stable regime. So that's yeah. So that's the main core of, of my research. So just to, to kind of conclude on on everything we've discussed there. So firstly, we presented a method that allows us to suggest whether the evolution of a network is related to edge importance, which provides us with the possibility to, to exploit this relationship when it is present. 
So, so if we if we do observe that we we, are, we have a particularly high value of rho for a network and, and that the plots are relatively linear, then then we could look to to um, to to assess the predictability of edges um, given given the structural importance of those edges. Um, it also allows us to to think about classifying networks in terms of their predictability as well, um, and thinking about how we might want to approach analyzing these analytically um, in a different way, depending on the class, um, depending on their parameter values. Um, and we hope to further investigate the the relationship um, with network stability. Um, and what we'll be doing is using these results as a as a starting point. Um, and yeah, so um, the the next things for us. Um, so so currently we're exploring the ideas of of how the aggregation scale um, uh, affects the predictability. So so there's there's kind of two things here. So we might expect as we essentially we're looking here um, with particularly with, with the equity data sets. We're looking at a data sets where we have a very very low level of granularity. So so we've got uh, transactions down to kind of a microsecond um, time scale. Um, so, so we could, in theory, look at just no aggregation. However, um, I, I expect that noise would probably dominate in these situations. Um, so, so we might expect the predictability to to improve with aggregation. However, our measure for structural importance is assuming that edges. Uh, change in an isolated way, so um, so we might expect a bit of a playoff between these two things. Um, we're also looking at, at uh, altering the measure slightly so that it's focused on nodes instead of edges, which is arguably more useful from a from a regulatory perspective because you can then work out which players in the financial markets you'd want to to focus on um, more. And then, as I mentioned uh, earlier. Um, uh, we, we want to look at the idea of classifying networks according to these these methods um, to to work out if we do see inherent groups of um, networks showing different behaviours and and then to assess how how these networks should be um, kind of analysed and also um, regulated essentially. Um, so yeah, that is that is it for me. I apologise for going slightly fast. Um, but um, I think we've now got quite a lot of time for, for questions. So, um, yeah, I guess um, ask away, really. <laughs>